I don't know if you know, but April's Child Abuse Awareness Month, particularly because children are too often abused by a relative or someone else very close to them. Now, experts say it's important for young victims to tell their parents and equally important for parents to believe their children. I gotta tell you, I spoke to a brave young girl who was abused by her grandfather during a family sleepover, and she had the courage to talk about what happened to her. We were just watching TV, and I said, Mommy, I think somebody touched me inappropriately. And that's when my grandfather got up and went to his, and went to the computer room. So he was in the room when you first yes, started this conversation? Yes, he's, he's always in the room during the morning, kind of keeping an eye on us, making sure we're okay. Obviously, we're not okay. Her dad now had this painful task of confronting his own father about his daughter. I told him that, you know, Brianne came to us and she said that someone touched her while she was sleeping. And, you know, my dad is sitting in the chair and he, he looks up at me and he says, Russ, I'm not going to lie to you, it was me. Just that whole moment, I just, I mean, my blood pressure went up. I mean, obviously I became super, you know, just angry, as any father would. And my response to him, it was just, it was complete shock. I was like, it was you? Shattered their relationship. And, and Russ, here's the, here's the important thing, he chose to prosecute his dad, who was convicted and given house arrest, by the way, because of his failing health. But I want to bring Angela Williams in. She's the founder of The Voice Movement, an advocate against child sex abuse. So glad to have you here. We know what Brianne did was brave because, it, one, it worked. She told her parents, and two, they believed her. How we as parents react to children in these crises can shape their entire lives. What are the three things we need to do that are most pivotal if a child comes to us with information like this? Well, that is such a critical moment um, for the child to not only get justice, but to heal. So I have an acronym, it's called CAR. So the first thing we need to do, we, um, our, our instinct is to panic, but we have to stay calm. So C is for calm. We have to be very good listeners. A, we have to affirm the child. We really have to ask, um, ourselves in that moment what the child needs and they need to hear that I believe you that I'm here to protect you yeah. and that you've done nothing wrong and then R is probably the most difficult and that's to respond with courage we know that 93 percent of the time the child knows loves and trusts this person so you know love and trust this person mm -hmm. so that is the most difficult thing is to call law enforcement to not do the investigation to let the experts uh, do the forensic interview so that that child's testimony can be protected and they can get justice and we know that sex predators or pedophiles are an entirely different breed of criminal right they are um, our friends, there are pastors, there are uh, doctors, there are lawyers, they are the people that we know. So when you say the word predator, we're looking for a monster among us. Their behavior, obviously, is, is heinous and is predatorial. And they will work for years to ingratiate themselves into our lives, right? They will work for years to ingratiate. They will also be that person that um, wants to isolate the child, get the child alone. Um, they tend, tend to have very narcissistic behavior, uh, very power control are some of their traits. Mm -hmm. um, and really what we need to recognize is how that child interacts with that person. Is there someone in the child's life that they're edgy around, that they maybe aren't comfortable around, that they don't want to go spend time alone with? Mm -hmm. And give the, the child a chance to say, I'm not comfortable here, and that's okay. And don't, don't force them to be around them. Why are you asking people to wear the color white? on Wednesday, specifically this Wednesday, April 30th? April 30th is a national movement. It's part of the voice movement called White Out Child Sexual Abuse Day. And it is time that we stand for the innocence of our children. One in four girls and one in six boys are sexually abused before their 18th birthday. And it's time that we stand in solidarity for the innocence of our children, but also for the wounding of 42 million reported survivors in the U.S. Only one of which you are one. Of we which I am one. Only one in ten ever tell. So it is a movement for us to come together and really for this cause, stand up and do something and let that survivor know we care about your pain. Mm -hmm. And maybe and in this you. and maybe giving it a voice and in this conversation we could find some solutions because we can't continue to be oblivious to this. It's not even an epidemic anymore. It's pandemic. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely. Angela Williams, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And again, you are encouraged this Wednesday, April 30th, to wear white to show your support to stand in solidarity 
with child sex abuse victims. So much more about this story, by the way, with Brianne and her family online. They just opened up to us. You can go to uh, CNN.com slash New Day. Click on the Weekend tab. And VoiceToday.org. And VoiceToday.org. Thank you. Victor? All right.